Good afternoon from ABB in Germany in Heidelberg. My name is Thorsten Reibel. I'm sitting here together with Jürgen, with Jürgen Schilder. Yeah, and we will share this webinar with the topic um, Logic Controller ABAS 121, part two. Yeah, we have done already in November last year um, the first part of these components, the first webinar. Uh, today we will go in some more details. I would hand over now to Jürgen. First of all, he will start and give you the first information and then I will continue later. Just a moment, please. Hello and a warm welcome from my side. My name is Jürgen Schilder and I'm continuing this webinar. Let me, let me start with the agenda. What's today the topic? So at first I'd like to give a small review or so-called overview about the features of the logic controller ABA-S, the hardware and the software. Afterwards I show you the IBAS tool. The logic controller is now supported via the IBAS tool. And afterwards I hand over to Thorsten and Thorsten continuing with the ETS, the introduction and the principle how handling of the plugin software about the worksheets, for example, then he starts, uh, then he continues with the different type of our function elements, PID controller, the calendar, the logic elements and so on, and how to create so-called function blocks. What is a function blocks? How we can create a function block and we can also export or import function blocks. So then uh, he start also with the so-called simulation. It's a kind of offline simulation, how we can test our logical elements and also the online monitoring, how to see the, the telegrams in a real installation here in our, um, uh, maybe in our worksheet. So, and at the end, a small introduction of the web user interface. So before we start with the device, uh, there's also available a special website, so-called microsite of the Logic Controller. So when you go to abb.com slash knix, and then you click on the button highlights, then you get this special microsite of the microsite of the Logic Controller. Here you can see at a glance all the benefits, the description of the device, and it's also possible here to download the so-called function blocks. We have created some function blocks. One is, for example, uh, to convert two bytes into one byte telegrams and so on. These function blocks are here available and, are for, and you can download it for free of charge. Afterwards, you can import these function blocks here the, as a FB XML file into the Logic Controller and you can use it in your installation. So do not forget, we have still done our first webinar of the Logic Controller in November. And you can also download from our training and qualification database the videos, uh, the video clip and the slides of this former presentation. So it was about introduction, planning, installation and commissioning some basic informations of the Logic Controller. So now let's come to some, hof uh, some hardware information of the device. Some words, it is a module DIN-Rail DIN -rail components. The module width here is four modules. Very important, the device needs additional power supply. It can be a 24 volt DC power supply or also via PoE, via the IP uh, connection, it can be also supplied or both together at the same time. But be careful when you use PoE, you have to follow the standard, the EIE, IEEE 800.3 AF class two device. Uh, the device has also a bus connection terminal to KNX behind here this cover. That's our typical bus connection terminal. And on the top we have the LAN connection. The LAN is used, the LAN connection is used for uh, the power supply for PoE, for example. And we can make also a fast download of the ETS application. So we have the possibility to make a download via KNX, which is a slow speed, or via high speed via the IP, uh, IP connection. So also it is necessary when we use the monitor function, which is online, then we need also a LAN connection. And the last possibility to have access to the device via a standard web browser to see the web user interface. So on the device and the housing, we have three LEDs. One is the green one, which shows that the device is ready for working. It has a power supply, KNX is available and so on. The yellow one is for LAN and link connection. And the last one, which shows there's a KNX telegram on the bus and then this LED is flashing. So some software features of the device. Uh, very important, we don't need additional software. 
it is a plug-in software. So when you import the product data into the ETS, you insert the device and then you go to the parameters and the plug-in software starts automatically. So the complete uh, programming is done here in our integrated uh, yes, um, plug-in software. And all our KNX, or like other KNX devices, it is integrated in our IBAS tool, which I will show you later how you can use the IBAS tool. It is a completely user-friendly graphical environment, similar like our former device, the ABLS. <clears throat> and we have new, a kind of online manual on our homepage. So when you are online and you click on the on the device on some help buttons, and then you, then you start, the browser starts up and you can see the online manual in a separate uh, browser window. So we can also define new or create some so-called function blocks. Function blocks exist of several elements like AND, OR, or other functions. At the end, you can maybe zip all these elements into a so-called function block and export this function block. And if you want, you can sell it to your customer because this is your own, own, uh, own know-how in this device. For simulation, we have the offline, so which uh, needs no KNX connection. For online monitoring, we use the communication here via IP, and then we can see what happens when you press a telegram, when there's a telegram on the bus, for example, or the device reacts. And the LAN and user web interface, for example, is also possible that the end user can have access to the device or make a faster download. So some, uh, some data about the software features, what we have inside. At first, we can have up to 5,000 of our function elements. An element is, for example, a logic element, which can be AND or OR, with more than only two, I think up to 16 uh, inputs we can have in a OR gate. It can be mathematics, we can add or, or multiplicate, for example, or divide. It's also possible to do some divisions. We have comparison elements, we have timers, delay, for example, on off delay. We have calendar, we have counters, flip flops, and of course, also PID controller. You can use it as a simple P controller or PI or PID. It depends on the settings. So, and we have 500 KNX inputs and outputs, so called our group objects, to link our maximum 2000 group addresses. And for operating via the web user interface, we can have up to 60 web user interface inputs and outputs. So, so far, a small introduction of the device. And then I start here with the IBAS tool. So, okay, I start the IBAS tool. The latest version of the IBAS tool is the 1910. You can download the IBAS tool for free of charge from our website. So let's start with the first button here, go to connect and to IP devices. And when we are here in the menu IP devices, the IBAS tool is scanning our IP network and shows all ABB IBAS KNX IP devices. So at the moment we have to wait some seconds because the IBAS tool is still scanning. So we can see here all IP devices like the GMA security panel, IP interface and so on. But now I click here on the left side on the button ABAS and then I see only here our two logic controller which are installed here in our local uh, ABB IP network. So let me click here on the first device. You see the device type, which is the name ABB ABAS one to one. The device name, which is ABB Loco or Logic Controller, this is at the moment fixed. We cannot see at the moment the individual address, but this is coming soon. So I think with the next uh, next update, it is also possible to see here our uh, log, uh, our individual address, the KNX address of the device. But here we still see the IP address of the device. This address we need when we want to have access to the device via our um, browser, when we want to use the web user interface. The MAC address of the of the logic controller. This MAC address is also uh, on a sticker, which is on the right side of the housing of the device. The status of our twisted pair of our KNX line. At the moment, we can also see here no status because this is not supported here in this version of this IBAS tool, but it's also coming soon. And the firmware status. At the moment, it's up to date, and maybe in future we will launch also another firmware, and then we can also make an update. 
So if you cannot see here any KNX IP device, then please check your firewall or McAfee. It can happen that your mic, uh, that the McAfee or Kaspersky or virus scanner blocks, for example, here the scanning mode. And then please disable the firewall, the McAfee or the other things. So what we have here also uh, is a kind of help menu. So when you click on the button help, yeah, then you get here on the right side the help to the different topics. And it makes really sense to read here and to get more information. So now I would like to give you some information about this our update, how to make an update. For example, when we launch a new firmware for logic controller or also IP router, IP interface, the principle is the same for all IP devices. At first, we have to click if there's a new update available for the IP router or for the logic controller. So we have to go here on the left side to IP firmware updates, click here on the left side. And then if there's a new uh, update available, it will be here showed in a red color. We see here new firmware is available. And then you can click here on the lower right side on the button download. And then this file is downloaded from our ABB server and stored on uh, here on your local PC. <clears throat> so at the moment, there's no available. So then how to make an update? We go again back to, our, to the IP devices. We click here to the, on this button update, update, and then we see all devices which you can make an update. I select here also on the left side to the logic controller. I click here on my logic controller, start update, and then, oh, what happens? I get here a strange message, insufficient rights to perform operation. Okay, this appears, for example, when you don't have the admin rights. What you have to do, you can close here this message, Close the IBUS tool, yes, and start the IBUS tool again, not via double click, click on the right side of the mouse, and then we have the possibility to select here parameter, run as administrator. So when you click here, run as administrator, yeah, we can say, yes, I want to start this program, and then the IBUS tool starts in administrator mode. And then we have the possibility to make an update. Let's do it again, go to IP devices, here to the menu update. Now we have to wait some seconds because he's still scanning our IP network. No. Please wait. wait. So come on, coming soon. So click here on the logic controller, logic controller, start update. And then you see here our, our window is available. Now we can make an update, available firmwares, and then you get a list of your firmware, which is on your local PC, then you can select the file, click on the button start, and then the update is running. And this procedure is the same here for the logic controller or IP router or IP interface. Uh, we have to do the same steps. Good. So far, small introduction of the IBUS tool. And now I stop here sharing my desktop. And now I hand over to Thorsten again. So now I'm in the ETS. I have opened already my project and you see here three different logic controller inside. Um, the first one I would like to show to you is, yeah, the, are the standard group objects. So if you insert the component uh, into your ETS project, by the way, it's a standard component. You import via the application as other components as well. So there is no special software necessary. Everything is integrated in the ETS. So it's a native application. But of course, if we see later, uh, or we click on the parameter button later, then you see the plug in the graphical environment where we can adjust everything. But also here you find something at a classical uh, ETS environment. First of all, the standard communication objects, which has to do with time functions, device clock. So we have internal yeah, time functions available in the logic controller. And um, we have to adjust the time of this component. So there is an internal clock. We have to synchronize this uh, internal clock with a, yeah, any master timer. Yeah? And um, the timer inside or the clock inside is not that precise that you should run all the time this time, yeah, this clock um, by itself, but it's necessary to, to synchronize maybe every day or every week. And you can do it here with these communication objects date and time or by sending a request to another master uh, date and time can be maybe sent from this device. Yeah, and then you have the correct date and time inside the component. Um, one further topic, IP. 
you know it's an IP device so we have to have an IP address inside this component there are two options you can obtain automatically an IP address so if you have a DHCP server in your network we have here right in, uh, right now in our ABB network or if you would like to have a static a fixed IP address you have to click here and assign here a fixed IP address that's the further option but this is all in principle the most important part is here behind the parameter button if you click on the parameter button open product specific parameter dialog you come to the plug-in of the logic controller yeah. you might remember already from principle from the application unit ABLS so this is very similar so on this I would like to show you a bit so what do we have on the left side we have all our in and outputs and also our function elements you see here a lot if I go down I will explain this a bit then here we have our menu with some functions um, the main functions are also available here at this yeah icons some more features here here we have monitoring and simulation we will show live to you and on the right side yeah you see at the moment nothing but later on you will see there are either parameters of our elements we have selected here or also the help text yeah. That's the principle of this device. Um, allow me to go to another logic controller in my project. I close this here because uh, there's already something programmed. I go to this one, open again the plugin. And what you see here, different from the first one, already some worksheets. Here in the middle, you see uh, some worksheets. I can click on these and you see already some functions inside, whatever it means. Yeah? So these worksheets I show to you later, you can create by yourself, you can name this. So let's have a look first of all to this left side of our screen here. So it starts with the KNX inputs outputs and you see here the inputs inputs from one bit to the final one is daytime it's 8 byte. So daytime both information and one um, data type time date and so on 4 byte 2 byte all these existing data point types we have we need to communicate with any yeah KNX telegram. And here you have also the output, so it's only different uh, the direction of the arrow from right to left. It's an output, but the same data types. Yeah? And I show you very soon how it works in principle, how you create a function. Uh, furthermore, we have here markers. I show this as well. Then we come to our function elements, logical functions, comparison. Yeah, some specialties like like gate and filter or multiplexer. Yeah, to switch between between different inputs, for example, mathematical functions already mentioned by Jürgen timer functions including calendar also a flip-flop this flip-flop is necessary to to uh, store a status for example a counter the so controller PID controller mentioned by Jürgen then we have also the option to yeah create constant values for example to compare a temperature with a constant other temperature to take some action again all data types are available so Besides the KNX IOs you see here, we use mainly, we have further IOs, so-called website IOs, necessary if you would like to assess functions via the web browser. So then you have to use these website IOs where you cannot assign any group addresses, but only can um, give assess via the web browser to some functions. Available for inputs and outputs. Later on, I show you how to create function blocks then we need again addition or special IOs, inputs, outputs, the same principle, inputs, outputs of all data types. Furthermore, we have the option to yeah to create some comments or to, to structure our our worksheet a bit with any rectangular uh, framing or to go to, to describe anything here. So it's more for the layout, for, for describing, for giving any comment to our functions. And the final one is or has to do with the function blocks. I show it to you later. Yeah. Good. So the menu here, I give you some information here. File. Um, export import means my yeah um, my logic I have created in the logic controller I can export as a separate file. Only the functions I have created inside the logic controller I can export and of course I also can import it to another component. 
So if you import uh, to another component, um, and there are already some functions inside this device, you do not override, you only add these additional features of the component here where you have exported. So you can take also other functions you have created already from other logic controllers and um, yeah, integrate this into a new logic controller if necessary. Function block later, you can print of course, uh, in principle uh, you print the worksheets. Later on you see how a work worksheet looks like. Print all or the current one. Yeah, if interesting features are check and settings. Let's have a look. Check. In principle nothing else but having a look how many elements or in and outputs you have used already. From the maximum number we have discussed uh, in principle already 5000 elements can be selected up to 500 in and, in and outputs can be used. So it's for you an information what you have used already. Settings. What you can do here are some adjustments. Um, cycle time of the engine of the internal, let me say, processor. The minimum cycle time is 200 milliseconds. What does it mean? And within 200 milliseconds, it yeah checks all inputs status. It calculates and sends out or, or uh, activates or let me, let me say um, updates the outputs as well. So within 200 milliseconds, you have a lot of yeah, functions maybe inside. If you want, you can increase this to reduce the speed of the component, maybe for any test purposes. But of course, normally you say, come on, as fast as possible. Uh, and then you keep here 200 milliseconds. So within 200 milliseconds, one internal cycle, everything will be processed. It's very fast and very powerful, this device. Um, to send out telegrams. Um, you can also reduce uh, yeah, the number of yeah, telegrams in principle to send out. Wait time for sending output telegrams can be increased here in seconds. So then you also decrease the speed of sending out of telegrams. And also minimum time between output telegrams can be increased here. Also something you might need in some special situations to reduce the speed of sending telegrams. Yeah, and last but not least, we have these in-operation um, communication objects. Means you send out cyclically an in-operation telegram from this device. Can be monitored by other components to check the, yeah, the availability of this component. You know this maybe from other components. It's not completely new. Okay, I close here. Yeah, here, what else do we have? The grid. The grid is nothing else here. The, 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 yeah, the, uh, in the worksheet here, it makes it easier for you to um, to position the components. We will see later. So normally you should activate this. Um, yeah, cut, copy, paste, undo all these functions we have also here in our uh, our yeah icons here. So standard functions. Monitor later and simulation as well has to do with these features: offline simulation and online monitoring. Yeah. And here, most of the functions I have explained you find here as well. So, redo, undo, uh, save, shut down uh, the plugin, and so on. Interesting is to change yeah, the resolution here or the size of your worksheet. Allow me to go to a worksheet where we have already some, some elements inside. And if you change here the size, you see you enlarge or this, or you do reduce the size could be also interesting sometimes to see as much as possible or you jump back to 100 percent. Um, search functions you might have a lot of worksheets as I have here already and you are looking for any function you have done but you don't know in which worksheet so what you can do first of all before I do this go to the options if I do something like this you uh, search in any worksheet and you search for any text if you click here in remarks, then it's only related to remarks like this one here, the yellow one. Or you can also look only in a current worksheet. So if I do nothing, I type in a word. I remember I did something with start function. Yeah. It immediately jumps to the right worksheet, in this case flashlight, where I've used here yeah, a naming for the input start. Yeah. So it's nice to find something as well. Yeah, here on the right side again, the topic simulation and monitor. I come to this later. Good. 
Yeah, allow me to start. I go to an empty worksheet to create a small logic to show you a bit more. To do this, I go up and I select first of all input. Allow me to make a very simple logic and end function only with two inputs. So I take from the left a binary input, one bit, drag and drop with the left mouse button. You can move it over to your worksheet and place it anywhere. And if I have the grid activated, it's easy to, to place it here. I need another one. And I select an end gate here as a functional element. And I can connect now the inputs, left mouse button, keep it pressed, and then you can link here directly to this pin of this end gate. The same I do with my second input. And I need an output, so I use here the other one. And I connect this as well. So, ready is my first simple logic, consists of two inputs, an end function and an output. Uh -huh. So, now let's go to the right here. And if you click here on an element, you find on the right in principle parameters. And also the option to name such an element, which is very important, I will show to you. So, the parameters are here very simple of an input. I can only adjust what shall happen in case of starting up of this uh, component, uh, which value sh uh, shall the input have. I can have an initial value, 1 or 0 only, or I can read group address from the assigned real KNX device, any input. No? That's possible. Sorry, again. And, as mentioned, the name is very important. So, normally you should not keep here only KNX in, you should give a name Maybe it's a brightness sensor connected. And if I confirm this, it will be also written here. And later, if I go back to the ETS, it also it will be also shown as a group object, which is very important to assign the right group address. So group addresses I do not assign here in this plugin. I have to do in the ETS environment. So each input and output should have a real name, uh, whatever it is, a button maybe button 1, and the real function coming out maybe is any light function. So uh -huh. That's what you can do, and if I click on the light, it means on the output. I have other parameters here. Yeah, the uh, um, parameters of an output is very important. Uh, sending behavior, send on change, if the value is changing only, or send always. You might remember this from the application unit, ABLS. And also new, you can also activate cyclical sending of the output. So any cycle time, so now every 10 seconds, the output will be sent out. And if I say here always, so always the same value will be sent out every 10 seconds. Uh -huh. You can do this. Uh -huh. So all the elements we have have only basic functions. Yeah? If I go to an end gate and check the parameters, it's very simple. You can select only the number of inputs. You see, if I increase here, it goes up to 16. It's the maximum. So 16 inputs for an end gate, if you need. But of course, I can reduce again. Uh, so very few parameters only. Important is the name. Also here, you can give a name, end function, and for lighting, whatever it means. Uh, can be named as well. Okay, and visible. Uh, Good, so that's the principle. Um, I check here my, my paper. So, um, yeah, worksheets. We have here already some worksheets. To create a new worksheet, you click here on plus. You can name this by pressing twice with the left mouse button, and then you can say, I need a new worksheet to create a new function. Uh, so, it's very simple to add more and more worksheets if necessary. Allow me to go back to my function here, to my feature here. Um, I mentioned that on the right side you can have also a help text. At the moment I have shown you only the parameters and yeah, the name of the, uh, the block. Um, if you go down to the lower right side, you see a help is written. If I click on this, then I get a, yeah, an information 
about the selected element, in this case input. Yeah? Some basic information about the input, how it works in principle. Yeah? This is more or less an extract of the manual. If you would like to have access to the manual here from the ETS, you can do this as well. You go here down again to more information. On the lower right side here you have more information if I click on this. And if you are online, connected to internet, it opens directly the online manual of the logic controller. Uh, again, to the input it goes, and here I have some more information. And you say, come on, I would like to go to the complete content of this uh, online manual. You go to home, and then you come to the contents. Where you have all the information around the product. Uh, description of the menu and so on. Uh, you can also download this online menu as a zip file from our homepage, so you can use it also offline, but you need a web browser to yeah to open in principle here um, all this information around the product. So I close this here. So it's both its parameter and naming of this element plus a help text you find here on the right. Good. So that's the principle. Um, ah, yeah. Allow me to show you right now um, already the simulation because it makes sense. At the moment I have created only a simple logic in my logic controller. I have not assigned any group addresses. I'm not online at the moment in principle, so not connected to any KNX installation. Not really necessary, but I can already simulate is my logic or my whatever function running. How to do? You go here on the upper right side to simulation. Yeah, in principle the same appears as before, but the whole worksheet. Okay. Allow me to enlarge this a bit, and you see more. Yeah, what is possible now? You see on each input now a small plus sign. If you click on this, you can type in a value. And it's it's a one bit input here. I can say send one or send zero. So I can trigger the input. I simulate the input by sending a value one, value one, and I confirm this. And now have a look to the output. False is highlighted with a red color. I confirm it again, you see. False. Output is false at the moment. What does it mean? I have an end gate. And if not both inputs are true, true is one, of course, it cannot be one at the output. So it's correct. If I add here as well one, I confirm now the second input. Then, of course, the output is true. It's a simple function. You don't have to simulate normally, but to show you the principle. So the output is true, but be careful. The output is only of the logic. So up to the real output light, what will be sent out now to the real KNX installation cannot be shown here because it depends on the parameters of your output. If I send here, for example, or I just send only in case of change, then only if the output will be changed will be sent out. If I send now always one, it's not possible because uh, uh, maybe it's programmed that I send only in case of change. Yeah? But the logic inside, that's what you would like to simulate. Yeah? That's possible here. Yeah? You see on the upper left side, date and time. Um, if you would like to simulate also time functions, but you don't want to wait until Christmas maybe where you have created any time functions, then you can simulate also any time here. Possible with this function on the upper right side. Adjust and refresh. Adjust means I can change here the time. I say, oh, come on, I would like to simulate the 28th of January at any time. And then I can adjust and you see here on the left side in my worksheet and uh, the new time will be adjusted. Now maybe your time function will run because it's related to this time I've adjusted here. If I say refresh, then it goes back to the real time. So also time functions you can in principle simulate here. Oops, um, allow me to stop. Um, in the simulation you see here I have options. At the, first, at the moment I created real time simulation, real time. What you can do, you can do it very slowly or very fast, the simulation. Slowly means um, it's around 50 times slower than real-time. Yeah? And fast means 
um, it's well, yeah, one second and simulates one hour, for example. So if you would like to accelerate or decrease the speed of the simulation, you can do it here as well. Next step is in principle what I've done with a return button here, with a return button on my, my keypad. And so it's a nice feature to simulate offline any logic you have created already. So I'm back in the um, yeah in the editor, and um, yeah, what do you do now if you have done your job here? You have to assign the group address. Means you have to close your plugin. You can do it here on the right side, and of course you should save now your programming. Otherwise, it's lost. So confirm this normally with yes. And then you will be back in the ETS where you have to select here the group objects and then you can assign the group addresses. Huh? And to remind you that it's very important to, to give names to the inputs and outputs because this will be seen here. You see here a lot of in and outputs. Yeah? And allow me to look what I've done here. Remember I have created an input brightness sensor. It's visible here. And button one. So if there's only k and x invisible, as in some of my here, <laughs> my group objects, you get lost because you cannot assign the right group address. But now you know, oh, here's my logic. Button one input, light, uh, sorry, brightness sensor input, and light as output. This is my end logic here. And then I can assign here the classical way via drag and drop to the uh, group object window or via the right mouse button. Link with is also possible. Yeah, the right group address. So keep this in mind. Important to have the right names here. Yeah. So and if you have done this job, means the assignment of group addresses. You can download the classical way. Um, yeah. So the application and the physical address to this device. But before we do this, allow me to yeah hand over to Jürgen again. Be again, because he has one slide to explain a bit the principle of downloading of programming of, of the logic controller because it's a bit different. Good, yeah, hello, now I'm back. So let me summarize these steps described by Thorsten now. So the first thing is we have to connect our device to the local area network via uh, IP patch cable. Then we connect our KNX bus cable and do not forget we need auxiliary power. It can be a 24 volt DC power supply and or also possible to supply the device via PoE. So then the next step is import the device in the ETS, open the plugin software, uh, we can set the IP address, automatic IP address or fixed IP address, we do the complete parameterization, we input, uh, we insert our KNX inputs yeah, or uh, our elements and do other things. And finally, we can simulate, like Thorsten has shown to you, we can simulate our complete parameterization. Then the next step is to go uh, to leave the plugin software to assign all the group addresses to our group objects. And then we can program the individual address. Very important, the individual address of the local controller has to be programmed via the KNX bus line. So we need a USB interface, IP interface, or we can do it via the IP router. So this is like the standard procedure. Go uh, press the button on the device, and then the device, the logic controller, gets the individual address via our KNX bus line. So, and then the next step is to download the ETS application. The ETS application can be downloaded via the KNX bus line or via a fast IP connection. That's what I'd like to show you on the next slide. So here you, we have the situation. We have in the ETS a current interface. It can be, for example, a USB interface, IP router, or IP interface. The next step was to program the individual address via our KNX bus line, via this IP interface, or USB interface, or IP router. So the next step is to download the application. So we can do it, for example, via the KNX bus line. And, or is also possible, it depends on this parameter here, uh, how it happens. One, th one situation is, it depends on our parameter here in the ETS. We have here a parameter, when you go to bus, connections, options, there's one parameter, use direct IP connection if available. So if this one here is not ticked, it is disabled, then the download happens via our standard KNX bus cable. Yeah, or via the USB interface, IP interface, or IP router. So this is our standard uh, uh, transmission, transmission speed on the KNX. 
If this parameter now is enabled, use direct IP connection if available, yeah, then the ETS use the automatic connection via our IP to the device and we have a very fast download. So you have not manually to change here the, the connection, the ETS is doing it automatically. It makes sense and is of course recommended. You later you will see uh, the download is very fast than the download via our KNX Twisted Pack cable. So please check in the ETS this parameter uh, and uh, tick it because it really makes sense and is recommended. Good, so far the steps, uh, how to make a download. And now I hand over again to Thorsten. I'm back in my project in the ETS. Um... So just a moment. Let's make a download. Okay, physical address download, I think I don't have to do this, but remember, if you go here to options, we have these connection options, use direct IP connection if available. Of course, it's necessary to connect also via network. Um, your, um, your logic controller, you remember, it has a direct IP connection, so you have to connect only physically, and then of course this option is available. Yeah. So let's go to the project, um, right mouse button, download, and now I download the application again yeah, to this device, and let's have a look. So you see on the right here the, the slider, and if you click here on this, you see connection, direct IP connection. It's also visualized here, finished. So let's have a look to the time. It's around just here. So connection, direct IP connection, it took around 10 seconds. And before this, I have already downloaded via bus. I have used here the IP interface, but in principle, it's a bus download. And you see here the time. It's around one and a half minute. So and the more functions you have inside the logic controller, the more you save time here in downloading via direct IP connection. So it's really recommended, much faster. And you have to only click here on this parameter in the ETS I have shown to you. Okay, I go back to the plug-in. So um, I just check here what I forgot to show to you. Um, this was a very simple function I have shown to you. Allow me to use another data point type. Remember, we have not only one bit available, but also one byte. Allow me to take an input with one byte. And what you see immediately, it's another color here. It's a pin. It's red. So each type, data type, has a different color here. Makes it easier to distinguish, especially if you connect now something. Black is reserved for one bit. You see it here. But red is reserved for one byte unsigned. Um, allow me to take an output. And what's possible here also in the logic control, you can connect directly in and outputs, which was not possible in the application unit ABLS. So in principle, it's an incoming telegram will be sent out as another telegram with another group address. Yeah. What else I can do? Uh, if I confirm this, you see also the line, the connection line will be shown in red. Makes sense. It's one byte communication here. Um, I can take another output and what is possible as well now you can link one input to more than one output in this case I have now if I assign group addresses of course um, yeah a telegram multiplier one input leads to two other outputs or two other telegrams here so quite nice you can do this as well um, beside naming of these yeah, elements or inputs you can also give a name to a connection line, if I click on a connection line, you find here also a parameter, not real parameter, but only a name. So it's whatever text and it will be shown here as well. So it's also not possible here to give a name to the line itself. It's a connection line. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I have not assigned any group addresses here. Allow me to go to another uh, worksheet, flashlight. I have assigned already group addresses. Uh, I go down with the slider a bit, but you can also move this one to the right a bit. Okay, now you 
see here real group addresses. I have signed here in the ETS group addresses already to this function. You see 358 will be shown also inside these init outputs. Very important. And um, yeah, not shown here because I did not assign group addresses. Another topic, um, you can invert also binary signals. You might remember this from the application unit ABLS. By double click on such a pin, yeah, a circle appears showing you that this signal is inverted. So in one telegram coming out of this end gate will be inverted to zero and vice versa. Of course only possible with binary signals but for each pin you can invert. So also the input, double inversion. Okay, makes no sense but here possible. Well, so another feature we have. Good, um, yeah I go to some more of these elements here, not all of course, um, but some very nice ones. The marker I would like to explain. Marker, input, marker, output. What does it mean? Um, if you are not able to connect any pins between inputs and any function elements, whatever, maybe within one worksheet, but also if you cannot connect over worksheet, which of course is not possible. If you have two worksheets where you have to link any, uh, any elements or any inputs, how to do this? not possible the graphical way via this, with this line I have shown to you, then you have to use a marker. And I take one worksheet here, for example um, two-step control. And maybe this output signal I would like to link to another input of another worksheet. What can I do? I can select the marker output. I link this to this yeah, pin and this marker output, if you go to the right, I have to reduce the size a bit. Okay, so we are here on the right with our yeah, name again, so it should give a name, maybe marker output one. Okay, I would like to connect this, I have prepared already something, to this input here, this is OR gate. How to connect? You take a marker input and you link this to this OR gate. Go to the name here, say marker in, one. And now linked to, you can select which output shall be connected. In this case I have only one marker out, so I can connect it to only this marker out. But now marker in one is connected to marker out one. Over worksheets. Yeah. I can take a further marker output, maybe to the next lodge. Sorry, this is a wrong one, it's an input. necessary, so I can take another marker input. Yeah. Sorry, I have to mark here. So, it's marker in two. Yeah. And I also connect it to marker out. Yeah. So means, I go back to the uh, two-step control. I click here on marker out one and now it's linked to two marker ins. So one output, marker output can be linked to more than one input if you use a marker. That's also possible. So visible quite well here and so very simple. Uh, you can take it or use it by yourself here. Yeah, what else I would like to show to you? There are a lot of interesting function elements inside. Um, I go back to my yeah, this worksheet, PID controller, already mentioned by Jürgen, very new, not available in any other component before. Available now in the logic controller, a freely programmable controller for any kind of control, not only temperature control you might have in your building, but any other control. And freely programmable means, if I go to the parameters, I can adjust the type of controller, not only PID, if I click only on P here, it's a P controller. If I say I need a PI controller, I click here on integral, it's a PI controller, or PD, only PD is possible, P and D, and finally PID. And the values to, let me say, to parameterize a controller, derivative time, integral time, proportional coefficient can be adjusted here. Well, fixed values if you want, or even more possible, you can say I need this as an input, 
then you get more pins on the left here and then you can send for these values via telegram also other values so it's a kind of dynamic controller then where you can yeah um, change the coefficients or the values if necessary via the bus very special but possible or you say come on not necessary I take fixed values here in the parameters yeah so if you enlarge this a bit oop this was too much uh, so you see here s the input for the set point um, actual value this both you need and o is the output that's what you need in each controller and r is a reset for the integral time as a special function um, you can have also but set point actual value and output this is necessary and then you have a controller inside yeah so i think there's no other component a canix component on the market which offers this feature to have an independent controller um, one more I would like to show to you it's here calendar under timers and delay if I take a calendar we have two calendars available one simple one and one not simple one you see the difference allow me to take a calendar simple I click on this and then you have also parameters a bit more here you see this uh, button with three points you click on this and you have the option to adjust it's in principle a daily timer you can say okay a start time then you have to remove input here so I adjust the time here at three o'clock in the evening uh, in, the, in the afternoon I would like to start a time function I would like to end this at 10 o'clock in the evening what does it mean and sorry back at three o'clock in the afternoon you send an on telegram you switch something on or later if this is later also if it's three o'clock and then at 10 o'clock in the evening it will be switched off yeah. so it's a daily yeah timer in principle yeah. you can deactivate this for example via telegram yeah, if I confirm this you see an A input here means I can activate and deactivate the timer if you want via telegram if I would like to have this yeah. so now it's not active the timer yeah. it's I have to activate this first of all so now it's active yeah, and the calendar, uh, the other one is, oop. allow me to remove this, so, and so, yeah, so now you have it. The other calendar, only a short information, it's not only a daily timer, but you can also add here weekly functions or weekly, uh, monthly or yearly timer. Yeah? Also the, the period where it's active can be, um, yeah, parameterized here. So very powerful, very powerful timer function you have here as well. Yeah. So at any special day, you can do it, take any action, whatever you want, as you expect from any timer. Okay. Good. Yeah, uh, we cannot go through all these. Uh, let me say, um, function elements. Um, yeah, time is running. We have almost uh, four o'clock. So two features I would like to explain to you. One is the monitoring. So what we did already was a simulation. It was the offline simulation. Monitoring means I have to be online. So my KNX system has to run. My logic controller has to be connected to the KNX, has to be programmed. And my related inputs and outputs, which work together with the logic controller, have to be programmed as well. So I check the functionality of my uh, solution together with online communication. So to do this, I take my example of flashlight. I have programmed here already. I have programmed already a flashlight. I have assigned already group addresses and I have real components. So we can start with a push button, with a real push button, my KNX installation. I have here on the side uh, a demo case. It's a function, not yet, just a moment, Jürgen. Um, and I see the action by switching on and off a light. Huh? So in this case, it's a flashlight two seconds on two seconds off so on off and change very simple so to run the monitor IP connection has to be established to the device so you need the IP connection communication t communication takes place via the direct IP connection of this component you click here only on monitor in the middle of this um, screen huh? so it takes some seconds Uh, 
Okay, normally it appears very quickly. Monitor. Oh. Um, yeah, just a moment. I stop here. Device does not respond. I think I did not download. If you have changed anything, you have to download first of all. So I have to go back. I close here the plugin. I confirm and I download again the application. Just some. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I see the difference here. Um, I have to, have to choose the wrong one. Let's take this one here. This is my real. We have two components here inside. I have to download this one here. Just a moment. So I download the application. Because Jürgens is not connected to the bus. <laughs> That's the reason. Okay. So I download the real one now. Sorry for this interruption, but uh, let's practice. So I download now the real one. So I go, but this, it's the same inside, the same functionality inside. You see all these worksheets again. I go to my flashlight and I start the monitor. And you see monitor running shown here on the upper left side of the screen. So now I'm really online via IP and now we take some action now. Jürgen press now the button to start here. So send a group address 358. And you see now here, the relay is clicking on off and you see the output flashlight. True false means on off. So you see everything running here also inside the logic. And if Jürgen stops now, false is an off signal. And also the output is false means off. Huh? So it's a monitoring of all the functions in your logic and together with the communication on the bus. Yeah, so it's a very nice feature also to check what's going on uh, in your real installation together with this logic controller. Yeah. yeah, you stop this and then you're back in the editor. So it's very simple. You click only here on monitor and the monitor is running. Yeah. Again, Prerequisite is to have an IP connection established to the IP, uh, to the logic controller itself. Okay, so last feature I would like to show is a function block, but you see later on something here. But before we do this practically, I hand over to Jürgen again because he has also some small information. So, okay, some words about the uh, function blocks. So a function block consists of function block inputs, like for example, here on the left side, we cannot use KNX inputs. That's why we have here some special uh, inputs, our so-called function block inputs, function block inputs. On the right side, for example, here we have our function block outputs, also no KNX outputs. And here in the middle, I have my function elements, yeah, my divider, my timers and my PID controller, or what do we have? So, and then we um, select all these elements here and then we create a function block. So, and what happens? We get here one function block and this single function block con uh, consists of my in function block inputs, elements and outputs. So, and then the next step is to our function block input, we can here link a KNX input and to our outputs, we link our so-called KNX outputs. That's the steps what we have to do. So, and before you create such a function block, you can use the simulation mode, which is offline, to test yeah, at first here your function block if everything is okay. So, and then it's also possible when you have created a function block, oh, at first it appears here in your, on the left side in the, in the menu list, in your in the menu own function blocks, you get here your self-created function blocks. Afterwards, you can also export a function block and hand it over to a customer, to other system creator, and then he can import this function block in his logic controller. But he cannot maybe unzip this, this function block because it's closed here. So you have never the chance here to open this function block again. It doesn't matter because here the uh, you as a system integrator, you have still here your original single elements with the function block inputs elements and function block outputs. Later you can edit it here, of course again, add some more elements or change some constants. Afterwards, create again here such a function block. Okay, so far these are the steps. 
how to create such a function blocks. And now I hand over to Torsten again. So, okay. Um, to do this, I have here another worksheet with a function so called transformation of degrees Fahrenheit in degrees Celsius. It's a mathematical calculation, more or less, only shown with these function elements, adding, multiplication, division, and so on, and some constant values, or values itself, um, I need here. So, if I get a telegram with a value in Fahrenheit, cells, uh, de degrees Fahrenheit, it will be sent out in Celsius, in degrees Celsius. And this one, this logic, I would like to have as a function block. So, how to do this practically? Um, you create, as I mentioned by Jürgen, first of all, the standard function here with kx inputs and outputs. You test everything with simulation, and then you do the following, and then you copy only your logic, and which is more or less not the in and outputs, but only what's between in and outputs. So I mark this here, left mouse button, and then I have here the option to copy, and of course to paste as well. So I duplicate only my logic. Yeah. Same as before, but no in and outputs connected. To create now a function block, I have to take not normal KNX in and outputs, as we have here, but I have to take function block IOs, you see here on the left as well. So the same data types, but only function block IOs named. So I take, in this case, it's a temperature value, which is a two byte float value. I have to take here the two byte float value as a function block input, FB input, so, 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 uh, so called, and I connect it as well to this input. And the same I need for output. I connect it here, that's the output. Uh -huh. Okay. You find here also on the right the name. And to create a function block, it's very important then that you give different names to the in and outputs but not only names, also the short description, the full description, and the index has to be different. For example, you have many inputs necessary for your function block, maybe. Each input has to have a different name. Otherwise, it cannot create uh, such a function block. So, I do it here, in this case, very simple. I add only one to each of these four descriptions or indexes. Indices, index, uh, <laughs> one. Okay, I have only one input, this is here really not necessary, but uh, allow me to show it to you. For the output, maybe I have more, I do the same, it's output one, one, out, and this should be maybe two here, because one is already used here. Index one here, index two, output. So important to change here this naming to different individual unique names or uh, yeah, descriptions. So now I have added this functional block in the outputs. Now I can select the whole yeah, logic, including in and outputs. Left mouse button, I mark everything, and then you have a button here, create composite block, means create function block. To do this, it opens a window here where you can give at least a title to your function block, a name to your function block. Yeah? Whatever you want. F to C Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yeah. You can also describe, you can type in the name of the author and any whatever description here. But it's enough to give a title, first of all, and I confirm this. And what happens now? If you go to the lower right side of our screen, down there, on the left side, left lower side, you find here um, Just a moment. I'm a bit confused now. Thank you, Jürgen. Here, this one. <laughs> Webinar F to C. That's the right one. So that's what I've created right now. So in my library here, more or less library, own function block, I find Webinar F to C. And I can take this function block now. Oop. Move it to my worksheet again. And what happens now? In principle, what I have here inside my logic or the logic itself is shrink down or is 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 if it will be f yeah is inside this one block only. 
with one input and one output. And now, if I use this, I can take my conventional, oh sorry, not one bit, but two byte, two byte float, my conventional KNX IOs, output as well, connect them. And now, <laughs> in principle, after assigning group address, downloading, and so on, it works like all the others here, like the conventional one I have created at the beginning. This is only necessary to create the function block, and this is your, your result, the function block itself, but the same functionality, no difference. So it's very nice to create out of a complex logic a function block. It's not here visible anymore what's inside, but it has the same function. Huh? Can be stored here, remember? in your own function block, and if you go to such a function block, okay, you can delete, you can change the name again, and you can export this. If I click here, I have to give a name, I can export this, store it anywhere, and then of course I can import it also here, and you see here, and further option, import it, um, I can import also further or other function blocks I get from anywhere. Uh, and importing is uh, here, import composite function block, then it opens, and any yeah uh, file with fbxml extension is a function block uh, you can import. No? Um, important is that you cannot open such a function block anymore. So you can click your double or right mouse button, nothing happens. You cannot open. You will not see anymore what's inside. So for the owner of such a function block, it's very important to keep your original programming anywhere and uh, to have a look later what you have done. Maybe you would like to change something, but you cannot do it with the function block itself anymore. Uh, so it's really hidden behind this block and only the owner has yeah, the original function inside. Uh, um, Maybe in future we we'll change this via a password that you can open still such a function block via a password. It's what I would like to have. <laughs> we will see, but um, we are thinking about such a solution as well, but at the moment not possible. Yeah, yeah um, Jürgen mentioned already in our on our homepage we have already some function block, very simple ones, available for you. I think this will be alive in the future, maybe also by means of you, the customers, or our colleagues, uh, to create a kind of, of, of library of, of, of function blocks, um, which can be offered to anybody, whatever it means. Yeah. Good. So that's uh, the final one I would like to show at the moment. Um, time is running. It's almost 10, or it's 10 minutes past 4. Um, yeah, I would stop here right now. And um, let's have a look to the questions. Um, how many components count this function block now? Yeah. Um, the function block, it's one element, of course, but inside there are also elements. Oh, it's one block. So it counts like all the elements inside. So if you have in this case, let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six six function elements we have used here out of 5,000. Yeah? It counts like six plus, uh, yeah, the function block itself like seven. Yeah? But we have 5,000 function elements available. So to reach the limit, more or less, it will be very difficult, I think. Yeah? But again, the elements inside will be also counted. Yeah? So, further question, it needs the functionality to reopen the function block. Yeah, as mentioned, uh, at the moment not possible to open. Hopefully in future we have a password. Um, yeah, we will see. We are working on this. Okay. Um, Jürgen, do you have any question? Okay. Uh, good. Um, I hand over to Jürgen again. We have still something left for you. Some final words. Um, let, let me remind uh, our training and qualification database to you. So in this database, you can find our complete online training portfolio about ABB, home building and automation. 
It includes the application manuals, our e-learnings we have, presentations, the video tutorials and, of course, our complete webinar slides and videos since we started several years ago. So not only KNX in this training and qualification database, we have also door entry systems and free at home in different languages, not only German, English yeah, in different languages. So please go here to this database and get more information. So we also continuing with KNIX certified certified training this year. So the first course, which is the certified basic course, will take place in April, followed by the advanced course in July. And for someone who wants to become a KNIX tutor, we have a tutor course in October. So these courses follows the KNIX standard for certified training. So we do these courses in the English language here in Heidelberg. And of course, we have some more trainings, our two-day trainings for the different countries, which are available in our international training calendar we have sent to you at the end of last year. So let's come to the next webinar. The next webinar will take place same day, Wednesday on 22nd of February in the morning, nine o'clock and three o'clock in the afternoon, Central Europe time. And now the topic is, uh, will be Bush Presence Detector KNIX. So we want to give you a complete range overview, uh, the application, we show you the application, the benefits, parameter, the ETS parameterization, parameterization of course, and we introduce you also the new KNIX Presence Detector Corridor. Uh, so this device will be available on the market in the next weeks. And now we can also give you here the information about also planning about the device, what's the difference between a standard presence detector and the presence detector corridor. So far, uh, you will get also the feedback email with the recorded, the link to the recorded uh, video and the presentation. Now I think we are at the end of this webinar. Yeah, I would like to hand over to Thorsten. Yeah, we have still some questions. Oh. Uh, I would like to maybe also show directly in the ETS. So, yes, so the first question. Um, is it possible to link a group address directly in the plugin or is it done in the ETS directly? As mentioned, you cannot do it at the moment at least directly in the plugin. If you go to such an input, right mouse button, nothing appears and there are no option here in the menu to assign a group address. So you have to go back to the ETS by closing the plugin. You go to the group objects and uh, allow me to do it at least once. Uh, I assign, for example, here uh, this way linked with a group address and I create a new one, whatever it means. So at the moment I want to show to you and so I have assigned a group address or we are drag and drop to the window of the group address, of course. The classical way you know from other KNX devices. The only option, at least at the moment, maybe in future it might be also possible in directly in the plugin, but not at the moment. Um, yeah, I just have a look to the, is this a question, it could be useful to display the amount, amount of components of a function block. Uh, back to the parameter, also the plug-in. <laughs> yeah. uh, the total number, you yeah, have first of all, this is here in check. In check you see what is in principle used, including elements inside the function block. 198 are used, part of them are visible, maybe some of them are hidden in a function block. And the question is, to show, yeah, I'm, I'm with you, Marco, uh, to show the, the number of components used in a function block. Yeah, it's a good idea. Okay. It's a good idea. So I insert, uh, no, any. I insert. So, and then let's go to check again. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's the way you can work. Remember 198 plus six, because inside this one are six elements, means 204. Okay. Yeah, but maybe we have a separate uh, 
uh, line here uh, used in also elements used in, in function blocks yeah, because they are at the moment hidden you cannot know you can can count here on all your worksheets <laughs> maybe the, the number of of elements but the hidden ones in the function block are not possible yeah very good idea um, this was here in this one yeah um, you mean here in the name or on the remark okay no no, I to, to create a function block. Okay, I'd like have to do it this way. Yeah. Now. Okay, here, in the description. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because you can type also anything. Six elements. Yeah. Okay. There are some options to do. And test. I create this again. Test is here. And I think going here, edit function block metadata, you get this information again. So also an existing function block, you can open at least this um, yeah, more or less description um, um, pop-up menu and then you can see how many elements inside. Okay, good. Some options we have. Okay. I look for further questions at the moment. Yeah. Um, ah, what we are still missing is a web user interface. Uh, time is running. Um, I would not show this at the moment. To be honest, it's a bit yeah, still under construction. You can, yeah, of course, assign some in and outputs via web IOs here. Remember here, website IOs, if I use this one here, these inputs will be then available in the web browser. And of course, you can link it to any function, then you can trigger from the web browser any features, or you would like to change the time. Yeah, gentlemen, thank you so much for your patience. We are a bit longer than normal, so one hour, 20 minutes, but I think it's an interesting device. And um, yeah, you will get the feedback email with a recorded webinar and the small presentation we had right now today. And um, yeah, thank you for your participation. See you next time. Bye bye. Ciao.